During a 5E lesson, elaborate is a time when you need to make sure you're planning meaningful activities for your students to practice all of this knowledge that they explored and that you explained in previous parts of a 5E lesson. And that's what we are talking about today. Well, I am Fleur with Aloha Monday Teaching, and we have been exploring a 5E model. Um, so let's just kind of recap where we've been. Uh, the first video, I went over just the comparison between Madeline Hunter and a 5E unit, just because our, like with evaluations, you might be being evaluated on a typical Madeline Hunter lesson, but what if you're a science teacher and you're using 5E? Well, they're totally, I mean, they're all linked and it's possible. So we talked about that and then we went through each, we're going through each of the steps. So we have talked about engage where we gave some lesson hook ideas. We talked about explore and some different activities you can do for students to explore the concept so that they are ready for explain, which is the third step. And that is where you are giving all of your information for students to learn and just um, the three things that you must have. So if you need to watch any of those or want to read the blog post or anything, all of the links are in the description. And now we're on step four. We are on elaborate. So you've already explained. So let's begin. Uh, this is based on this blog post. What are some science activities to use during elaborate 5e? So let's talk about what is elaborate. This is when students are applying the skills and the concepts that they've learned through those through all those previous steps. Here they will use the vocabulary that they've learned. Um, they'll clear up any any other misconceptions that they still may have. They will analyze models or claims, and they'll explain or argue their claims in reasoning and communicate to others. So that is what Elaborate is all about. So we're gonna go over four different activities that, or types of activities that you can do during Elaborate. And as you know, some of these things you can do during Explore, and some could even be a piece of your Engage step. So it really, it's so flexible and it really depends on what you are teaching and your goals for your students learning. Um, so the four that we're gonna talk about today are projects, continuing an investigation that they started during Explore, labs, and using stations or choice boards. So what's happening during Elaborate in the brain is that with this repeated deliberate practice and different activities for the left and the right brain, they're gonna strengthen those neural connections in their brain, which is what we wanna do with our students to help them keep this learning. So when you're giving them information, when they're just starting out, it's in working memory and it hopefully through practice, it'll move into short-term memory. And our goal as teachers is to get as much of it as we can into long-term memory. And that is through this repeated deliberate practice. It has to be meaningful. So some Here's what we're going to talk. So next, science projects. Um, we'll talk about that first. So science projects. When planning projects, be sure that you're considering options for different learning styles, if if possible. Um, you can just have just one project that the whole class does, like we do a 3D cell model project during our cells unit, or I like to do different options for my. Um, advanced students where they have a choice such as they can create a model or an illustration, they can write a story or a news article, they can write and perform a song or a skit. I'll do this with my, my grade level students also, just maybe modify it a little bit, um, give them two choices or incorporate it all into one project, like they're illustrating and they're writing and then, you know, that sort of thing. So you wanna consider those different learning styles when you're planning out your projects. Um, if they're continuing an, an, an investigation um, that they started during Explore, 
then during elaborate, now they're applying what they learned during explain. So they explored, they're like, okay, we're investigating this keystone species and what it is. And so they found out, they learned a little bit about an elephant or something like that. Then during explain, you talked about the importance of the keystone species in an ecosystem and what could happen if, you know, that keystone species went extinct, that sort of thing. So now during Elaborate, your students are going to put all of that together into whatever it is that you're having them do, whether it's a project or a lab or something like that. Um, so they can analyze more data during these um, investigations. They can read other articles, watch videos about it. Um, they can write claim evidence and reasoning paragraphs or essays and share with their students, construct those arguments. There's a lot of things you can do as they continue this investigation. Another type of activity that you can do during Elaborate, of course, are labs, which you could do a lot like in Engage. You can do it in Explore. Um, you can do it when we talk about evaluate, that could even be then. So we're science, we love doing labs. So your labs can be just whole class guided labs where every kid is doing, every student's doing the same thing. You have a sheet or they fill out in their notebooks or however you decide to um, have them keep track, like do their lab report. Um, or you can do student led labs where you give them the parameters. They take what they've learned and then they create their own lab um, further on understanding. So there's different ways that you can do labs. And you don't have to do just one lab during Elaborate. Elaborate can go over days at a time. And finally, the fourth thing we'll talk about is for Elaborate is using choice boards or stations. And this truly allows for that repeated deliberate practice because um, when you're using choice boards or stations, you have a variety of activities that is purposeful, meaningful, that's going to give them that practice that they need to make those neural connections in their brains. Um, so you'll want to really choose activities for different learning styles. So let's go over a choice board. This is just an example of a choice board that I've used in my classroom. And on this particular choice board, you can see um, this was actually made for um, an online class. This is when we were all on Zoom that year. So I have a lot of computer types of things, um, interactivities. We use Brain Pop. You can also, I like to incorporate vocabulary in everything that I do, whether it's a choice board or a station. So um, you could have a vocabulary activity of some sort. I, I use thinking maps in my classroom. Um, or you can just use regular graphic organizers. But for this particular one, we did a flow map of the life cycle of a star. So you can sequence things, you can do cause and effect, compare and contrast that those um, different things. You, you can add something here for illustrating or making a model. I have a research aspect. So the way that I use choice boards is they have to complete the four corners and then they choose one or two activities. It just depends on the amount of time that I'm giving them and the activities that I um, have planned for them to complete. And you can also do that in a choice menu type of thing where things are worth a certain amount of points and they have to work towards like a hundred points or, you know, there's, um, there's a great book that I like to use as a resource um, for choice menus. And stations, this is my personal favorite. And I like to have a lot of different stations, but I always have a vocabulary station. I always have a reading station, um, some kind of art or illustrating or model station so that they're making something. And I like to have a math and science station to integrate math, but there's so many different kinds of stations that you can, you can offer your students. So it just depends on what you're teaching, what your goal is for them. And this allows students that deliberate practice because they're doing different activities and it's being repeated. So they're really learning and you're able to walk around and monitor and make sure your students are learning and clearing up those misconceptions that they might still be having. So that's what I love most about choice boards and stations is that it gives you the time to really see where your students are, are at. So we talked about four different ways you, four different activities that you can use during Elaborate. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, it can be done in 
explore. It could be in, in engage. So there's, it's so flexible. That's the great thing about 5E and all of your science activities and lessons. All the things you come up with can fit almost anywhere. Um, so we talked about projects and paying attention to the different learning styles and see if you can offer something like a, an option for each learning style or incorporating different learning styles into one project. We talked about continuing an investigation that they started during Explore, where they apply what they learned in Explain and they do they continue that investigation during the Elaborate step. We talked about labs during Elaborate and we talked about um, using stations or choice boards for that repeated deliberate practice and um, the fact that you can monitor and you can clear up any misconceptions as you are uh, walking around the room and working with your students. So it is your turn. How will you allow students to apply what they have learned during Elaborate? What will you try? What's new? What other ideas do you have? I would love to hear. So be sure to post in the comments and then check out these other videos about uh, lesson planning or engaging your students in your science class.